Hello and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also hit the bell icon so that you can be notified of new videos. Welcome back to part two. And if you haven't watched part one, which I didn't even label as part one, I guess I'll go back and label that. Um, we made this origami Victorian purse puzzle. And what I did was I had a kind of a mock-up that I did, one finished one, well, semi, because I guess I didn't paint that. And then today we're just gonna paint all of this. So welcome back, because today's gonna be watercolor day and hopefully also write the messages inside. So this is what it looks like all finished. And by the way, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to go with what I've done here. But one of the things I am going to share with you is that I painted this moon and star at the very end. And you can tell that I kind of missed a section here because this is very difficult to, to tell what's what. And you're going to really have to wait until all of this dries before you can touch that. So I think I'm going to go for it and do the front part first. And watch, it's going to be just all wrong, but why don't you just hang out with me and see how it turns out. So all you need is a paintbrush, a lovely high-tech um, thing of water, and we're mostly going to be doing a kind of a drier brush, so you're not going to need that much water, as you can tell. And then what I have is this Kuretake Starry Colors, and I love 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 this palette by the way i didn't mention in my other video uh, you can purchase this it's widely available it's actually very affordable this thing i've had for over a year and it has hardly made a dent and i've actually been using it so there's that so there's quite a bit of color that you get the the cake the pans are really wide and big and then this one i picked up at hobby lobby and it's not bad at all and this is a yasutomo and super affordable talking under ten dollars so <clears throat> we're not using that because i want to keep things kind of similar tones all metallics all in that starry colors um, thing so the reason why we are now i said dry brush but i start dipping mine but what i'm going to do is just put a little bit of water down in the pans that i'm going to be using and the reason why is you kind of want it to just soak up just a tad bit so that you can get started and that was the problem i had with that palette i i'm not known for my patience and uh, so anyway, I just, when I started using that, I just couldn't even get uh, get the colors going, but I didn't realize that I needed to just sit there and wait for just a second while those colors kind of popped up and showed up. So there you go. So I'm just gonna start painting uh, because the moon is this beautiful silvery, pearly white and uh, these colors you are not going to need a lot and it's not going to look like anything's going on and when it's done it's just just amazing oh this is what i was going to say and i interrupted myself so if you are a dip pen user which i am this is how i found out about these colors you can actually use this for dip pens it's it's so so pretty and you can do calligraphy with these uh, Kuretake colors. It's just gorgeous. So anyway, it's multi-use and uh, not just watercolors for here and there, but you can even write cards out with it. And one of the things I recommend if you're not into dip pens or you think that sounds too complicated, first of all, it's not. You can use a glass dip, super easy. And... Um, Actually, when you get a glass dip pen, they just look really amazing too. So then people are like, ooh, what are you doing? And you can feel very, very important because you know how to use a glass dip pen. So there's the moon and it's done. But to write with these, I would recommend getting a water brush. I got these at Hobby Lobby and uh, they come in different packages and you can just fill it up and just write with them too, like a card or something like that. I don't know. I love, I love gold i love the glitz i love the glamour and so all right um 
for the sun, I, I went for the darkest, kind of almost this bronzy color. Why? I don't know why. Um, I actually can't answer that. Not really sure. Um, just wanted to try out every single color in the palette. And I think I was kind of gravitating towards the uh, more golden colors. And so I, I mean, golden, they're all golden, but the lighter colors. And so I, when I got around to the outside of this, I decided, you know what, I think my outside's going to be really striking and I am going to use something that's a little bit darker. So let's put some more on here because you don't want to be here all night with me. So I'm just going in and just painting each of these rays here. I set this down because it's getting a little shaky in my hand. I had a ton of caffeine today. And then I was like, whoops, I was going to paint and do a video. So not the best plan either. Um, I'm hoping some of the caffeine's out of my system. I'm still kind of feeling a little shaky from the caffeine. Um, I think one of the big reasons is I'm not a big coffee drinker. I'm a tea drinker. And I had coffee this afternoon. Whew. Some intense stuff. All right. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it. Here we go. Okay, and if you don't get it perfect, don't worry. I don't think people are gonna be like, oh, hey, you missed a spot. Although this is kind of like a big miss the spot because I missed this whole section here. Let's just fill that in. I was also watching a movie while I was doing this and so not 100% on my concentration. There we go. Easily fixed. You know, that's the other part of this. Don't worry so much about... People want their art to be like A++ perfect. I don't know. It's just too much pressure on yourself. You are using gold paint. I think whatever you do, people are going to be impressed. There's just something about gold and metallic paint. Just take my word for it. Okay, so... So pretty, don't you think? It's just beautiful already. All right, and then I am keeping sweat. This is real time. We're just gonna go for it here. Um, and I'm gonna open that up. And yes, I can feel that it is wet still. All right, so just living on the edge, what can I say? This is my mock-up, so we're gonna open that up. And what I did was I used kind of a lighter gold on these stars and a heavier gold on this one. I don't know what's lighter and what's heavier. I think I'm just going to... So I'm guessing this is the lighter gold. I didn't even prep it with some water. Or did I? I don't remember. All right. So we're just going to go with that. Um, this is why I have a kind of a thinner brush. You can just use whatever you have on hand. I don't think you have to go out and buy new supplies for it. This is just a cheapy brush from Hobby Lobby too. It's not anything exciting. All right, so there's that. And you can actually do the, the comet tail if you want. I didn't do it on the other one, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Yeah, I'll just do it in this. I just combine all of there we go. Why not? Let me go ahead and get this guy too. It doesn't even look like you're doing anything, but you are. All right, so there's those. That was fast. And then I'm just um gonna go for a darker gold. I don't remember which one. We'll try this one. It's not a life and death. So this is one of the reasons why I went for the darker gold on the sun because I was using a bunch of different golds on the inside and I wanted to keep the moon as the white because you don't really have that much of a palette here 
on this one. All right, so wet paint. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Woohoo! As I do it gently. All right, let's go for this one and see what was here. All right, let me zoom out. I'm way too close. All right, so I have the I have a two-toned sun here. So I've got the same bronzy color with a darker gold. Um, some of the gold here. So I'm going to just keep going with the gold that I have. And then I think I used a combination of different golds here, silvers, and then here. So let's just, I'm going to just set this to the side. And then we're just going to do this here. Okay. Let me zoom back in. All right, so since I have these and that one, I think. Okay, so the last thing I did was the diamond, so I'm gonna keep going with the diamond colors. And I actually like that for the sun rays. So I think I'm gonna do that. Oh, that, that I have another diamond here. Whoop, off the screen, right in the center. All right, and then here, and you can see the wet paint kind of peeping out. I mean, I guess if you're doing this at home, you can just wait for a minute and not be all impatient like me. I'm adding a little bit more paint on this so that it can just go a little bit faster. So, but not, not too much so that it takes forever to dry. And yes, I could have used a larger paintbrush for the sun, but you know, didn't let me do that. Okay, so the rays are painted. Is there anything else that I wanted to get? No, I did not. All right, so now I'm gonna get, oh, one more. Yep, one more. I knew there's a diamond hiding in here somewhere. There we go. So I got this guy, and now I'm going to go for just a lighter color, the same one as these for the five-pointed stars. And so, do I do that one? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm going to stick with that same. I like that um, kind of consistency, if you will. All right, where am I? So there's one. There's two. There's three. There's two up here in the center. Okay, so just do those. Whoops. If it goes out, don't worry about it. It's just glitter paint. I'm not gonna stress out about that. And then here, oh, and as I said that, that one also came out. If you're looking for perfection in a video, this is not the one to watch. I'm just a great sales person for my videos, aren't I? All right, so there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the white again so that I can get the moon. And the pearly white. Oh, and I also want to get these planets. I'm going to get... I don't know why. I feel like they should be white. Okay, is that it? I think it's just the moon. Oh, in the cloud. That was it. Again, you can use whatever palette that suits you if you want to use different colors. Or, as I said in the other video, if you just want to even leave it just written in, um, kind of just with 
black pen. I think it would just look beautiful that way too. But I have to say, when you are adding the metallic paint, it's just, there is just something really spectacular about it. Not just because I'm doing it, I just think it's pretty. Okay, so there's the cloud with the little stars. There's the moon. I think I got most of it. Just see a couple spots. It That's the only tricky part of this, but then it kind of looks like the moon because it's got all different shading on there. I think it's really pretty. And then we pretty much have the sun and then Saturn and a couple of the rays over here. And I think I'm going to go with this really pretty gold just gonna keep some of the white on there for the and this i'm doing in dots I ran out of paint there. I can see the shimmer, but I could not see the color. That looks really cool. It's got a little bit of the silvery and then some of the gold. Oh, I like that. I guess it pays to not clean off your brush. All right, so I've got the center part done. And now back to this color, and we'll do some of the planet. Actually, I'm uh, yeah. Whoa, that's a lot of water on there. And I'm gonna leave it differently shaded. I like, I like that it looks like it has some movement to it. And then the sun. And after this, we just need to let this dry. And then you can write your messages on there. And I'll just share with you what I have on there too. So I'm just gonna paint this and then come back. And I'm back. So that did not that did not take that long to dry. And now we're gonna go ahead and just write some verses in there. And so I have a verse from Revelation 21:23. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and its lamp is the Lamb. And so I'm going to just write that down, and I'm going to be writing with my Sailor Compass 1911. It's actually a very, very affordable um, fountain pen, and I have a video on the Sailor Compass, and it's one of my, my go-to like everyday pens because it's affordable and lovely. I don't know if you can see that. There we go.
Okay, I have a couple of things to say on writing on your masterpiece. So it's a little nerve wracking and you really need to be paying attention because you've worked so hard in painting all of this that if you mess up the writing, pretty much mess the whole thing up. But um, if you want to, you can practice on another sheet of paper or you can just even take, um, write out the verse or whatever message you have and then like cut it to shape or something like that. And then you know, paste it in there. And even if you mess up, you can probably replace it that way. So yes, it's pretty nerve wracking. Just make sure that you have um, a place that you can maybe sit down and just kind of quietly write it out. And then that's, that'll be good. So to close this, you're gonna um, grab the opposing ends and just kind of squish this together so that these four, um, spots kind of come in and then you've got the pinwheel shape and what we're going to do is on the pinwheel shapes now we are going to write out your other messages or in my case verses it doesn't matter what order I'm just gonna I'm gonna start with the genesis because it's in the beginning so I'm gonna <clears throat> use it with this one kind of shining meteor because it's the first one it, I kind of have no rhyme or reason really but I'm just gonna write that and the verses in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And these are just verses that have, you know, something to do with celestial, you know, so I, I like it. I think it's kind of cool to have all of that. So I'm going to write. Okay, so writing on this section is going to be a little bit tricky, mainly because you already have it folded up, and so you don't want to like move your hand so that you smear the ink. Even if you're using a gel pen, you might want to be careful of that. So what you can also do is just set something a little bit maybe heavier on the end of it so that it stays down. So that's not a bad way to go. The other thing is if you are really shaky and just not sure about your handwriting or what you're doing or the verses, you can use a pencil. And so that may be another option. This one is Psalm 104, 19. He made the moon to mark the, mark the seasons and the sun knows it's time for setting. So we're going to Write that one. Make sure. Okay. All right, so there's that one. And then I got a little crazy on this and got some of the paint here. And again, if you're making this, hopefully you're making it for a friend. And so they're not gonna really worry about that. But, you know, just when you're kind of painting on inside the creases, that could be something that can happen. So for this one, the verses, but for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And that's from Malachi. So the son of righteousness. And that one goes with this one because I feel like this is the kind of the star that the Magi followed. So this is a verse about Christ.
All right. And then the last verse is also a psalm. And that is, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. All right, so one of the things I wanted to say is that I actually messed up on the other one that I did. You can see it right there because I put the heavens declares, and so I had to kind of go back through and just kind of fix that. So, you know, things will happen as you are painting and doing all this work, but hopefully um, you will take great joy in what you have accomplished and that is this really, really pretty um, maybe letter or keepsake that you've created for someone. You can also write them a note back here. But remember that, I don't know if you can tell, this is 24 pound paper. So it's a little bit thicker than just regular copy paper. Just a little bit. Because regular copy paper is about 20 pounds. And so it, you can, I don't know if you can tell here, but it is actually seeing it's coming through so if you write a note here make sure you do it in a pencil or something very light so it doesn't show through to the back side of what you have done and painted and so here is the one that we just worked on together and closing that up i mean so pretty so so pretty and i'm so happy to have two of these now and so, anyway, it doesn't take all that much time, but it's just a great way to um, draw and just use your ideas on, you know, maybe choose some different drawings for the sun, moon, stars. You don't have to go with what I have. You can write somebody notes. You can even draw other things on the um, inside part instead of writing verses there's poetry all of these things and I forgot to write make the little stars out here so anyway um I hope you enjoyed this and would you just jot down some thoughts or comments that you have on using these marvelous paints if you have them or I hope that if you don't have them maybe you'll try them out and until next time bye